What the fuck is that? <laughs> God. Can I do the intro? <laughs> what the fuck's up? <laughs> I bring you grains of truth. There's two things I wanted to talk about today. They're two completely different things, and they often get confused with other things. And and so I'm gonna explain it all for you. Uh, what I what I want to talk about is pay-to-play games and free-to-play games. The difference between them, pros and cons, and what exactly they are. First, I'm gonna talk about pay-to-play because I feel like that's a little bit easier to explain. Pay-to-play is basically you have a game, but in order to play that game. You have to pay a subscription fee. Um, the two most popular games, at least, that I hear about all the time when it comes to pay-to-play games are going to be, obviously, World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy XIV. They do it a little bit differently, so what I'm going to talk about first is, is World of Warcraft. Basically, the way it works is that you download World of Warcraft, you start paying that subscription fee so that you can uh, play past a certain level or whatever. If you want to keep playing, if you want to get new level caps, if you want to do stuff like that, you buy the expansion. Final Fantasy XIV works similarly, except for the game isn't free to download, you have to buy it in the first place. You still have to pay that subscription fee, you still have to buy those expansions if you want to continue playing, play those new areas, those new gears, get those new levels, but you also have to buy the game to begin with. Something that you used to have to do with World of Warcraft, but you don't anymore uh, because it's so fucking old. So this has been around for a while. This is a system that a lot of people are familiar with, and it's archaic as shit. Frankly, it really doesn't belong in 2017. And now you might be asking, Nick, why doesn't it belong? It's pretty cool! I love World of Warcraft! I understand if you love World of Warcraft, but there's a problem, alright? Think of it this way. If you went to an amusement park, and you bought like a park pass, right? It allows you to go into that park and you don't have to pay an entry fee for 30 days. You just buy that one thing and then you got 30 days to go into that park and do everything you want. Except, here's the problem, you can only walk around the park. <laughs> In order to go on any of the fucking ride, you have to pay a separate fee that allows you to go on that specific ride. And every ride has a separate fee. Those are like expansions. Doesn't that sound pretty fucked up? No, I mean, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, it, it, with a an amusement park, you fucking pay an entry fee and then you can go on all the rides if you want to. And if you want to buy a park pass, that allows you to go in and have free reign over all the rides for however long that park pass lasts. For 30 days, whatever, it doesn't fucking matter. Final Fantasy is even fucking worse. Not only do you have to pay the park pass in order to gain entry to the park, and you also have to pay for all of the fucking rides individually, but you have to pay for like a fucking park pass pass. You have to pay for a pass that allows you to fucking buy the park pass in the first place. What kind of bullshit is that, right? Why would I buy a game and then also pay to play that game and then also pay for the necessary expansions to keep playing that game? It sounds pretty fucked up when you compare it to a normal game that you spend $60 on and then you can play that game forever. It's archaic as shit. It really doesn't belong. Uh, it's, it's, and I, and I hear this term get used every now and then. A lot of the time it doesn't really get used, uh, in the right way. It's anti-consumer, really. Uh, it, it's benefiting the company without mutually benefiting the consumer. The, the only reason that they do it is because it gets them a shit ton of money. A fucking ass load of money. And what do you get out of it? the ability to play the goddamn game that you bought. Think of something that's pro-consumer. A great recent example of this is The Witcher 3. Buy the game or you get it from a friend or you borrow it, or it doesn't matter how you get the game, you have the game in your hands and you get 16, I believe it's 16, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get 16 free DLC to mess around with. This doesn't benefit CD Projekt in a direct way, it's just earning sort of like, good, what is that? Good, uh, I can't remember the word. It's just, it, it makes people like them as a company, and so the hope is that they'll continue to buy their game. And guess what? It fucking worked. Like, it worked a lot. But what the fuck, you said something about free-to-play at the beginning of the fucking episode. Okay, well, okay, well, fucking, okay. Free-to-play, the way that works is that it's a game that you can download, you can play it for free, and it doesn't cost you a goddamn dime. 
a lot of the time, there's some kind of wall that is preventing you from doing something. That can be preventing you from continuing to play the game until you wait an allotted amount of time, locking out characters or maps or something like that. Or sometimes they don't have any kind of limitation like that at all. If you don't play console games or PC games, uh, this might sound familiar to you. It might sound like a mobile game. And that's because a lot, if not like most mobile games, are free to play. Uh, you download it, you can play it, and then there's some kind of wall that might be preventing you from progressing. Maybe there's not, and there's just ads. And then there's something else in there called microtransactions. Microtransactions are basically just a small transaction that you can make to earn something small in return. <laughs> a small transaction you can make uh, to earn something small in return. Now, microtransactions fit really well into free-to-play games, and, and a lot of time there's an in-game currency as well that you can just earn by playing, and you can get these things anyways, it's just much harder to do uh, if you don't want to shell out the cash. A great example of a free-to-play game is uh, Dead or Alive. Dead or Alive 5 uh, is free-to-play. The way it works is that you download it, you can play it, you can play training, you can play arcade, you can play online, you can do everything but the story, really. But you only have, I think, two characters. That might sound like it sucks dick, right? Oh, why would I only want two characters in a fighting game? Well, that's the point, is that you buy the extra characters. I think each character is like $5 or something like that. You can then buy the characters that you want instead of buying the game and having a bunch of characters that you paid for that you're not going to fucking use because you don't like those characters, so you can just buy the ones that you want to use. It's a hell of a lot cheaper when you can just download a game for free and then spend five bucks on your favorite character and then just use them. Not always does this work. A lot of the time, free-to-play games can be so riddled with microtransactions that it becomes a little overwhelming. The whole time thing gets on my nerves, like, a lot. Don't fucking make me stop playing your game, because I'm just gonna stop, and I'm not gonna ever turn it on again, uh, because I don't like waiting around, and I'm not gonna pay your stupid fucking fee so that I can speed time along. Uh, I hate it when games do that, but... You know, it, it is a free game, so I suppose, what can, what should I expect, right? Here's the problem, though. This model of a game where you, you play it, and you earn an in-game currency, and there's microtransactions, and you start with no characters, and you unlock characters through that in-game currency, but it's really hard, so you have to pay for it anyways. This might sound familiar to another group of people, because this is exactly the way that Rainbow Six Siege works. Now you might be asking, Nick, what the hell is Rainbow Six Siege? Well really, the only thing you need to fucking know about Rainbow Six Siege is that it's a goddamn $60 game. You pay for the fucking game so that you can play a free-to-play game, really. I mean, it's a free-to-play model. You have to pay for the game so that you can pay for a bunch of fucking microtransactions. And that's the problem with free-to-play, is that the, you got these companies now that are using free-to-play models, but still charging $60 for a game. It, is, it says nothing about how good the game is, mind you. I like Rainbow Six. Uh, I really enjoy it. The thing that I don't enjoy is all the fucking microtransactions. But I already spent $60 on the fucking game! Why are you making me pay any more? for stuff that is in the game. It's not DLC, like, th that's a common misconception. It's not fucking expansions that we're talking about here. It's not like Legion for World of Warcraft. $40 expansion, but it gives you new places to explore, new new level cap, new gear, all that jazz, right? Uh, this isn't a fucking DLC. This is just absolute bullshit. A lot of other examples of this. Overwatch should have been free to play. It's riddled with fucking microtransactions. Star Wars Battlefront should have been free to play. It had, what, four maps to play? Or, I, oh, excuse me, four planets to play at launch. Uh, but really, the only two modes that matter have four maps, one on each planet. Uh, and then, of course, I had a bunch of fucking expansions, and you can only play it online. Oh, wait, that's right. It has that survival mode that you can get through in like an hour and a half. That way, they didn't have to put online only on the box. What other games? Another great example of this is Evolve. The game was, frankly, was not very good <laughs> at launch. Uh, I'm gonna throw it out. Uh, I played it at launch. I was super excited for it. Made by the people who made Left 4 Dead. Um, it was hugely unbalanced. Like, my god, it was borderline unplayable because of how unbalanced it was. They didn't call them microtransactions. But really, that's what they were. It was skins, it was fucking weapons, it had like $70 or some shit, maybe even more, of day one DLC. It's so bullshit, and so many people were upset with this, 
that it ended up going free to play anyways. <laughs> Each of them has these huge problems. I love free-to-play, I love that model, I think it works really well nowadays, but there are companies that are taking advantage of it. Pay-to-play is archaic as shit. It doesn't belong in, in the current gaming uh, landscape, but companies use it anyways because they can, they can fucking jab you uh, on all sides with, with paywalls. But I digress. I'd love to know what you think. Do you have a problem with it at all. Do you love games like Rainbow Six and Overwatch and you think that the microtransactions and uh, uh, those free-to-play elements that are in there are totally fine and warranted? Uh, or do you agree with me? Do you think that it's kind of bullshit? Whatever. It doesn't matter. I I'd love to know your opinion. I'd love to read the comments down below. Uh, watch out for my next video. Uh, it's going to be about the Nintendo Switch. Uh, so that'll be something that you want to you wanna watch. Make sure you laugh a lot, eat a lot, and have fun doing it. You'll see me in the next video. Goodbye.